Hi guys, welcome back to the second video in our tutorial series on RabbitMQ. In the last video we looked at what RabbitMQ is and why we would want to use it. In this video we are going to look at installing RabbitMQ using various different methods. I will split the video out into several chapters so you can easily find the installation method you wish to use. If you wish you can skip the instructions for the methods you don't intend on using as all the methods will end up with RabbitMQ installed in the same way. First we are going to look at installing RabbitMQ on Windows manually before looking at how to use the Chocolaty Package Manager to install it. Then we will look at running the Docker Community Image. To install RabbitMQ manually on Windows, the first thing we need to do is install the Erlang programming language. You need to install the version that's correct for your operating system. In my case I'm running a 64-bit operating system so I will install the 64-bit version of Erlang. To get this we can go to erlang.org slash download and I will leave the full link in the description so you can follow yourself. So I'll click on the latest version of Erlang and the 64-bit Windows installer and I will download this. So once that is downloaded we can follow the default installation instructions. Here we are installing Erlang version 24.1.3 but the latest version should suffice. By default, Windows will install Erlang in C slash program file slash URL and then the version number. So we just want to install and wait for it to finish installing. Once that has installed, we can open a command window and navigate to that directory to make sure it has installed. Next, we want to set the Erlang home environment variable. Navigate to the control panel and select system and security. Then select System and Advanced System Settings. This will open the System Properties tab where we can add and remove environment variables. So click Environment Variables. We want to add a new environment variable called Erlang Home and set it to the installation path where Erlang was installed. So RabbitMQ can find this. In the System Variable section, click New. Then add the variable name Erlang Home and the value of the location where you installed Erlang. In our case, it's C slash program files slash ERL 204.1.3. If you've installed a different version or installed Erlang in a different location, your variable value here will have to be different and point to where it was installed and the correct version number if that is the name. Select OK to set the environment variable and then close all the windows you have open. To check the environment variable has been set correctly, open a new command prompt and type echo percent Erlang home percent. Verify that the value is what you have set in the previous step. We can see here that the environment variable Erlang Home has been set to our correct location. Now that we have Erlang installed, we can install RabbitMQ itself. Go to the GitHub page for RabbitMQ. I will leave the link in the description. Go to the releases and then navigate to the RabbitMQ-Server-Windows zip file of the latest release. We can see here the latest version is 3.0. 9.8 and the zip file is 23.4 megabytes large so we can click that to start the download. Once the download is completed we want to extract the file to where we want to use it. So we can see the file has been downloaded into our downloads folder so if we right click it we can click extract all and then we can just extract it to our downloads folder for now. This will take a little bit of time to complete but once it's done we should be able to get started with RabbitMQ. Once it's been unzipped, we can look inside the folder. We can see a lot of different files, including this plugins folder. And we can see all the plugins that come with the default installation of RabbitMQ, which allow for extension of the software. These include the management plugin, plugins for federation, as well as for using different protocols such as Stomp and MQTT. To run RabbitMQ, open a command prompt as an administrator and navigate to where you extracted RabbitMQ. In our case, we extracted it to our downloads folder, so that's where we need to navigate to. The scripts required to run RabbitMQ are located in the sbin folder.
feel free to edit your environment variables and path as required to make running these scripts easier. Run rabbitmq-server.bat to start the server as an application. Make sure to grant it the required permissions if prompted. This will also start the management plugin, which we can navigate to by going to localhost 15672 by default. We can see in the output here that we're running RabbitMQ version 3.9.8, which is what we installed, and also details around the version of Erlang we're using and how many plugins we are currently running our broker with. So if we navigate to localhost 15672, we can see we are indeed running the RabbitMQ management plugin. We can log on using the default username and password, which is guest and guest. And now we are in the RabbitMQ management UI, which means we have successfully installed RabbitMQ on Windows manually. Now we have covered the difficult way to install RabbitMQ on Windows, we will cover the more convenient and recommended way, which is to use the Chocolatey Package Manager. Chocolatey is a software management solution where you can create a software deployment package using a little PowerShell. Then you can deploy it anywhere you have Windows. First, open a command prompt in the administrator mode and copy in this text from the Chocolatey website in the link in the description. This will download and install Chocolatey on our local machine. Once this is run, we can use Chocolatey to install RabbitMQ. First we can do is type Choco to make sure the installation has run correctly. Now we can see that we are running Chocolatey version 0.11.3. Now all we have to do is install RabbitMQ. And again, we use the Choco command. In this case, we use Choco install RabbitMQ. This will install all the required packages for us, including Erlang and RabbitMQ. So we have to click Y to run all of the scripts. And once that's completed, we should have RabbitMQ installed by default on our machine. This will take care of all the steps covered in our previous section and allows us to get up and running much quicker. Once the command is finished running, we can navigate to the management plugin again at localhost 15672 to make sure we are up and running correctly. You might be prompted several times to approve the installation of packages, but once completed, we should have RabbitMQ up and running on our machines. So once again, we can navigate to localhost 15672 and log in using the default guest username and guest password. And now we have successfully installed RabbitMQ on Windows using the Chocolatey Package Manager. Another simple way to run RabbitMQ on both Windows and Linux is to use the community Docker image. In this video, we won't go into details of installing Docker, but if you want to install Docker Desktop on Windows, please follow the link I've given in the description for the full instructions on how to do this. Once we have Docker up and running on our machine, we can run a simple docker run command to run RabbitMQ on our local machine. So we can see in Chrome that we're not running RabbitMQ as the management plugin is not available on 15672. Again, we'll open a command prompt in the administrator mode and we'll run the following Docker command. Docker run dash it dash dash or m dash dash name RabbitMQ. So we're opening port 5672, which is for RabbitMQ itself, and port 15672 is for the management plugin that we're familiar with. We are running RabbitMQ 3.9 here, but the command should be similar for most versions. When we run the command, we will pull the image from Docker and automatically start a container running RabbitMQ in interactive mode. We can see the container running on Docker desktop, and again, if we navigate to localhost 15672, we can look at the management portal. So let's run that command and see what happens. And as usual, I will give the command in the video description. So as you can see, that's running now and installing 
our Docker image. When it's finished, we'll have a look in Docker Desktop and also at the management plugin. So looking in our Docker Desktop UI, we can see that we have RabbitMQ running and it's open on port 15672. So if we go to back to Chrome and open localhost 15672, we should be given the link to the login to the RabbitMQ management plugin. And this is running in the Docker image on our local machine. So we can log in using the usual guest and guest passwords and take us into the management plugin. If you're enjoying these videos on RabbitMQ, don't forget to give them a like and subscribe to the channel.